Hey guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 8, the periodic table. First, let's dive into group 1. The group 1 metals are also known as alkali metals. Lithium, sodium and potassium are examples of alkali metals. They are relatively soft metals. You can cut them with a knife. As you go down the group, you may notice some trends in alkali metals related to their physical properties such as their melting points and densities. Melting points decrease as you move down the group. So, as you go down the group, the lower the temperature it takes to change the element from a solid to a liquid. Density is how heavy something is for its size. Density increases as you move down the group. Group 1 metals react similarly with water. Here are the observations of the reactions of the first three elements in group 1 with water. Lithium reacts slowly with water, produces fizzing and moves on the surface. Sodium reacts more vigorously than lithium with more fizzing and faster movement. Potassium reacts even more vigorously, burns with a lilac flame and moves rapidly. Based on the above observations, we may identify a trend occurring as you go down the group. That reactivity of group 1 metals increases as you move down the group. Now, given this information about the first three elements of the group, we may predict that the lower group 1 metals will react even more strongly. The predictions are, rubidium will react violently with sparks, the reaction will be more vigorous compared to potassium. Cesium will cause a violent explosion. And francium is too reactive to predict. Even when reacting these elements with chlorine or oxygen, the same trend in reactivity is observed. Reactivity increases as you go down group 1 in each reaction. The other properties of group 1 elements may also be predicted by observing trends in known elements. For example, if we observe that the density increases in the first three elements, we can predict that subsequent elements will have even higher densities. Similarly, if we see that the melting point decreases in the first three elements, we can expect it to decrease further in the elements further down the group. Now, we will move on to group 7 properties. The elements in group 7 are also known as halogens. Chlorine, bromine and iodine are examples of halogens. They are diatomic nonmetals, example Cl2, Br2 and I2. Diatomic means a molecule made up of two atoms. For example, chlorine is diatomic because it has two chlorine atoms bonded together. All halogens have seven electrons in their outer shell. They gain one outer electron to get a full outer shell and become halide ions with a minus one charge. At room temperature and pressure, these are the appearances of the halogens. Chlorine is a pale yellow-green gas. Bromine is a red-brown liquid. Iodine is a grey-black solid. 
please keep in mind halogens have distinct colors at room temperature but their colors change in aqueous solution or as gases let's look at the trends down the group the density increases as you go down group 7 which is reflected in the state of each element chlorine is a gas bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid the reactivity of group 7 nonmetals decreases as you go down the group this trend is the opposite to group 1's reactivity trend In group 1 elements as you go down the group the positive nucleus attracts the outer electron less strongly this makes it easier for the element to lose its single outer electron so reactivity increases in contrast for group 7 elements at the top of the group the positive nucleus attracts electrons more strongly making it easier to gain an electron so reactivity is higher up the group as you go down the group this attraction weakens making it harder to gain an electron so reactivity decreases we should be able to predict the properties of other elements in group 7 given information about the elements so now that we know the appearance of chlorine bromine and iodine at room temperature we can predict that the next element down the group astatine will have a darker color and be in a solid state the melting and boiling points increase down the group so astatine will have a higher melting point than iodine density increases down the group so astatine will be denser and heavier than iodine reactivity decreases down the group so astatine is likely less reactive than iodine a displacement reaction is when a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound in displacement reactions involving halogens a more reactive halogen will displace a less reactive halogen from its compound so a more reactive halogen displaces a less reactive halogen from its halide salt the less reactive halogen is displaced by the more reactive halogen This results in a new halide salt being formed with the more reactive halogen. Let's look at some examples to get a clearer understanding. In the case of chlorine reacting with a bromide, here's the reaction. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine. It displaces bromine from sodium bromide, forming sodium chloride and bromine gas. Since bromine is the less reactive halogen it gets displaced by chlorine a new halide salt sodium chloride is formed with the more reactive halogen chlorine for chlorine and iodide here's the reaction chlorine is more reactive than iodine so chlorine displaces iodine from sodium iodide producing sodium chloride and iodine gas in the case of bromine and iodide bromine is more reactive than iodine so bromine displaces iodine from sodium iodide forming sodium bromide and iodine gas so the general trend in halogen reactivity is that as you move down the group reactivity decreases Fluorine is the most reactive followed by chlorine, bromine and then iodine. In any reaction, a halogen higher in the reactivity series will displace one lower in the series from its halide salt. Next, let's dive into transition elements. Transition elements are metals found in the middle of the periodic table. iron nickel and copper are examples of transition metals 
transition elements are metals that have high densities, have high melting points, form colored compounds, and often act as catalysts, as elements, and in compounds. Transition elements have ions with variable oxidation numbers. This means that they can lose different numbers of electrons resulting in ions with different charges. Example, iron commonly forms two oxidation states. Iron 2, where it loses two electrons, and iron 3, where it loses three electrons. Finally, let's shift our focus to noble gases. Noble gases are the elements in group 8 or group 0 of the periodic table. Helium, neon and argon are examples of noble gases. Group 8 noble gases are unreactive. Their atoms have a highly stable electron configuration in their outer shells, so they do not need to gain, lose or share electrons. This stability is why they don't readily react with other elements. For example, helium has two electrons filling its only shell, so it's stable. Neon has two electrons in the first shell and eight in the second, making it stable as well, and so on. Noble gases are monoatomic gases, meaning they exist as single atoms and are not bonded to each other or other elements. Because their outer shells are full, they have little tendency to form bonds. That concludes Topic 8, The Periodic Table. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye-bye.